I've experimented in the past by giving Naruto various dojutsu. I've given him Sharingan, Byakugan, Rinnegan. I've tried giving him these three great dojutsu, but one thing I've never done for him is give him all three at the exact same time. I want to see what would happen if Naruto got all three of these from the very start and how it might affect him. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome to the Amagi! Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, we just released some brand new merch. If you'd like to show your support for the channel even further while at the same time repping stylish clothing, be sure to check that out as well. The store is linked below. YouTube's been unsubscribing users from channels lately, so if you're a fan of us, please do us a favor and double check to see if you're still subscribed. It only takes a second and it helps us a ton here at Amagi. And with that out of the way, Let's get into the video. The first thing to do is explain how in the world he got all of these dojutsu. Well, besides just saying, I'm curious, let's give it to him, the answer I would choose is that Naruto is the product of a Hyuga and Uchiha union. So for now, I'm going to say that Minato Namikaze and Kushina Uzumaki have some genes from both, likely with Kushina having unmanifested Hyuga genes and Minato not displaying the Uchiha genes he has. As for the Rinnegan, well, maybe the Sage of Six Paths wanted to get ahead of the game and gave some chakra up to Naruto, enough to awaken his Rinnegan. Also, I plan to give Naruto the Mangekyo Sharingan. Maybe the fact that his parents died in front of him as a baby is enough. I don't know, but I'm going to run with this because I want Naruto to have a real head start in this what if. So, most of Naruto's birth goes pretty much the same. Nobody really knows. I wonder if Obito might pick up on this though. After all, he has experience in people possessing Rinnegan. He knows Nagato, but whether Naruto was born with any of these eyes awakened or not, I do not know. So maybe he might just sense something from him. But to a point, I doubt he'll do anything about it since Naruto technically hasn't awakened them yet. So Kushina is taken by Tobi and has her tailed beast removed from her. But in the end, both he and Kushina sacrifice their own lives to save that of their child before sealing half of the Nine Tails, apparently the bad half, into Naruto. Naruto is taken in by the third Hokage, but he's a hands-off kind of guy and, well, everything. Naruto likely still ends up taking care of himself. I could see his manifestation of his dojutsu really coming up quickly as he learns how cruel the world can be, pushing him around for something out of his control, blaming him for something he didn't do. Naruto was the village hero, yet he was treated as a demon. Of course, at this time, he didn't even know why. He couldn't even defend himself, he was just a kid. That pain would manifest within Naruto at the moment his as of yet still hidden dojutsu would manifest, startling people. By this time, the Uchiha were already dead, and very few people would recognize the Rinnegan without them, or the help of the Hokage, who would have yet to realize what Naruto had. People would take it as a manifestation of his evil soul, considering it the eyes of the demon inside of him. And maybe, just maybe, Naruto would believe it. They would scare him, make him wonder if he was hated for a reason, and if that reason was well merited. However, the Rinnegan was not the only thing that awakened. His Byakugan and Sharingan had awakened as well, including his Mongekyo Sharingan. Now, I'm going to negate the cost of Mongekyo use on Naruto specifically because he has the Rinnegan. I'm pretty sure if you do have the Rinnegan or the power of the Six Paths, it naturally turns your Mongekyo into an eternal Mongekyo, as Hagodomo never seemed to have issues from his Mongekyo. And Kakashi, upon gaining Six Paths Chakra, was capable of using Susano and Kamui, even though he was mostly blinded in his eye from spamming Kamui during the war. Of course, there were some circumstances, such as losing his eye to Madara and further losing it to Obito, both of which had regeneration, the latter of which being capable of spamming Kamui thanks to his cells cultivated from Hashirama Senju. As I said, some of these cases are special, but then again, Naruto is also a special case. So, just for the sake of not knowing, we'll say that he doesn't have the vision strain of the Mangekyo. Naruto would enter the academy, and amazingly, he would actually do far better than before. Rinnegan actually grants its user affinity of the five chakra natures, meaning he has an easier time learning techniques from these natures due to his Sharingan and Rinnegan. So, he has the capacity to learn them almost as soon as he sees them through the copy ability they present the user. So, Naruto would actually be well ahead of his class instead of falling behind. Naruto would pass the final exam of the academy with little to no effort, even going so far as to learn more advanced techniques, which he can make use of due to his naturally high chakra reserves as both an Uzumaki and Ashura reincarnation, on top of being a Jinchuriki. So, Naruto actually distinguishes himself well as a shinobi by this point. He would be placed on Team 7 specifically because there are no open teams officially, and basically because I can't break up Team 7 like that. 
Sasuke would be very interested in Naruto as he not only has the Byakugan, but the Sharingan, and even the Mangekyo variant that so far he had only seen Itachi use. He would take this as a way to know that Naruto has seen a hard life. If he's awakened a full Mangekyo, while well, Sasuke himself has only awakened a base Sharingan. The bell test would come about, and, well, Naruto is proving himself to be quite the handful, going so far as to even manifest a Susanoo in an attempt to catch Kakashi off guard. Kakashi has to resort to utilizing his Sharingan just to stay ahead, and this catches Sasuke's eye as well, as it seems that everyone but Sakura has a Sharingan at this point. After that fails and Kakashi manages to stay ahead, he attempts to give them a second shot to overcome him. Naruto then proceeds to use Sasuke's help to try and get them, and due to the two perfectly linking up with their vast array of abilities, they manage to actually get the bells, which was Kakashi's plan the entire time. Due to their hard work together, Kakashi passes them. Team 7 is formed. Meanwhile, it begins to be known that Naruto possesses these dojutsu, and the Hyuga would begin to debate what to do about this. The boy is an orphan, and despite possessing the Uzumaki clan name, he has the genetics of a Hyuga, and above that, he possesses the Kekai Genkai, the Byakugan. So they would call him in under the approval of the Hokage to interview him. Naruto would seem almost annoyed by this, but curious nonetheless. Hinata is excited to see him again. Naruto would be considered a Hyuga, and as such, he would be granted a place to live within the clan compound. But in exchange for this, he's forced to receive the cursed seal of the caged bird on his forehead, which ensures his Byakugan can never be removed. This also means that if Naruto acts against the clan, they have the ability to pacify or even kill him. Naruto didn't really want that, but to a point, he didn't have a choice. The Hyuga clan was the only surviving clan with claim to Naruto as the Uzumaki and Uchiha both were destroyed, and the Namikaze clan were not present. Thus, the Hyuga were granted custody to do with him as they pleased. That being said, he would still be allowed to do as he pleased. He would even possess a place to call home. But the seal ensured that the Hyuga clan's dojutsu was safe, and ensured that his Rinnegan would also never be laid claim to. After this comes the Land of Waves mission that Team 7 undertakes by Naruto's own desire. On their way, they would encounter the Demon Brothers, but Naruto's reflexes were fast. He saw them coming quickly and struck out with the Diva Path ability that knocked them back. Utilizing Chakra Chains, he changed them to a tree. Sasuke and Kakashi are amazed by this. They continue on and would encounter Zabuza. Kakashi would attempt to take him on all by himself, but we know how that ends up. Naruto, however, would summon his Susanoo, which would offer the perfect protection against Zabuza, who would be unable to break through the construct, and would offer Naruto the chance to attack him back. Seeing his master about to lose, Haku would step in to end this by faking Zabuza's death. They would move on to Tezuna's home, where Kakashi would attempt to teach them proper chakra control techniques and how to affix their bodies to various surfaces, including water or vertical structures. Naruto manages to get the hang of this quite quickly. His Rinnegan and Hyuga genes allow him to learn this fast. The Rinnegan allows him to observe it and learn the methods, and his Hyuga genes allow him to make use of it due to their ability to expel chakra from every Tenketsu in their body. So Naruto pretty much picks this up on his first few tries, displaying very natural talent. Sasuke is left by himself with only his anger to drive him. In the end though, he too masters this. As time passes, they end up on the bridge, including Naruto. While they're away though, Gato's henchmen manage to kidnap Inari and Tsunami to hold them hostage. Naruto and Sasuke would both face off against Haku. Naruto's Susanoo would defend himself and Sasuke from Haku's Senban, and Naruto would manage to break through the demonic mirroring ice crystals with the sheer might of his chakra avatar. In this way, Naruto and Sasuke beat Haku with almost no effort, and Kakashi would kill Zabuza. But by this time, Gato shows up, threatening Inari and Tsunami. Kakashi knows that there's only one chance. He utilizes his Kamui ability to free Inari and Tsunami, but collapses thereafter from exhaustion. Gato's men take this as a chance to gang up on and kill him, but Naruto releases his Susanoo and proceeds to decimate the enemy, knocking them off the bridge. When they get to Gato, Naruto threatens him, gripping him in his Susanoo's hands, squeezing ever so gently, telling him that if he doesn't leave the people of the Land of Waves alone, he'll come back. And when he does, he won't stop squeezing until Gato pops like a balloon. He then drops him into the water. Naruto and Sasuke then tend to Kakashi, who is conscious, but so weak that he can barely talk. The villagers celebrate, and Naruto is hailed as a hero. Kakashi is taken back to Tezuna's home to rest while the village celebrates being free of Gato's control. They hold a festival in honor of their newfound freedom, and Naruto is the star. For the first time in his life, he knows what it feels like to have people celebrate him. He's so moved by it that he almost cries. But he doesn't. He instead laughs and enjoys the festivities. 
A day or so later, Kakashi is good to walk again, and so they begin to make their way home, where Kakashi updates Hiruzen on Naruto's abilities, stating that he's proven himself to be incredibly strong at this age. And so he offers up his team for the Chunin exams, which Hiruzen accepts. Kakashi poses it to his team, which they also accept. On their way to sign up for it, Naruto is challenged by Rock Lee. See, normally Lee would challenge Sasuke, with Naruto interrupting only to get put on his back like a turtle, but here, Naruto is actually the target. The reason for this is Naruto's unique abilities. He is more than Sasuke ever was. He would challenge Naruto to battle, and while Naruto's taijutsu is nowhere near as good as Lee's, he's picked up quite a few moves with his ability to copy. However, Lee gets the edge as his abilities aren't copies, and he is far stronger physically. This prompts Naruto to utilize the Susanoo, with Lee preparing to open the eight gates in hopes of tearing through it. But Might Guy stops him, chastising him for using this forbidden jutsu without proper reason. He punishes Lee and Team 7 sneaks away while this happens. They would sign up for the exams and proceed to the first test. Naruto, having access to the Byakugan, is actually capable of cheating without anyone knowing. Of course, I wonder if Naruto would choose to cheat at all, but for the sake of this, we can say that he does decide to cheat just a little bit. Due to this, the entire team would pass with flying colors. Naruto would have found a way to cheat, Sasuke would have found a way to cheat, and Sakura would have big-brained her way through it. When the final question comes around, it's revealed that those who answer it wrong would never be able to become Chunin. Naruto would easily take it without a second thought. Of course, by merely taking the question, they answer it correctly, because the only wrong answer is to refuse to take the question, which I actually thought was a nice touch. Naruto would pass with flying colors and they'd move on to the Forest of Death. This deadly game of Capture the Flag is the one that Team 7 is confident they can handle, but little do they know what is waiting for them. They are attacked a ways in by Shiore, who is revealed to be Orochimaru. However, instead of going for Sasuke, he's here for Naruto. Naruto is far more interesting to Orochimaru due to him possessing not only the Sharingan and the Mangekyo Sharingan, but a Rinnegan and the Byakugan as well. He possesses the greatest eye techniques in the world, and Orochimaru would kill to have those. Besides that, he also possesses the Tentails. He sees Naruto as a walking weapon. He wishes to have time to study all dojutsu and abilities, and if he has access to Naruto's tailed beast, he could flat out destroy Konoha. They have quite the battle, and Orochimaru is astounded when he sees Naruto making use of and even spamming Susano. No blood is dripping from his eyes, meaning he is in possession of the ever-elusive Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. It's getting better with every minute. He would use his snakes to come at him from every direction, attempting to tire him out and cause him to expend his chakra, but as the snakes came, Naruto cut them down with his Susano. Orochimaru needed to get through it. Naruto was expertly protecting his friends with his abilities. It was then that Orochimaru called for Zaku and Misumi. There, he proceeded to use them as sacrifices for the impure world reincarnation jutsu. With it, he managed to reincarnate the first and second Hokage, both of whom he robs of their personality and uses against Naruto. With the first Hokage's wood release and the second speed boost, Naruto's Susano is overwhelmed. Orochimaru manages to sneak through and implant the curse mark on Naruto. He would then pass out. Sasuke, in an effort to save their own lives, would throw a smoke bomb and get a hold of Naruto before they can be attacked further. Orochimaru sends his Kage out to track the team. Sasuke knows that there's no chance to beat them, so he decides to flee with Sakura and the unconscious Naruto to the building in the center. If they can at least get there, then they might survive. The issue is getting away from the first and second Hokage. They're legendary warriors, and Team 7 are just a bunch of Genin. What could they even do? They kept running, hiding, and using every bit of training they'd learned in the academy to not get killed. Sasuke even began the process of subversion. He knew that they couldn't carry Naruto everywhere, and Sakura needed to stay with him in case he woke up. So he hid them away and rushed away with two clones that he had transformed to look like Sakura and Naruto. As he ran off, he would get the attention of Hashirama and Tobirama and disappear into the forest in a completely different direction. Sasuke would manage to shake Hashirama and Tobirama. Meanwhile, Naruto was resting with Sakura. She was worried. He wasn't waking up and it looked like his body was trying to fight off an infection. But suddenly, he would jolt awake with a scream. A raging roar as the power of the curse mark and the nine tails intermingled in a way that unleashed so much chakra. He stood and it seemed as if chakra was coming off him and burning him. Sakura could feel the heat. She called out to him. Suddenly, as Hashirama and Tobirama appeared, Naruto would activate his Rinnegan and summon the Ghetto Statue. With it, he manages to push them back. He utilizes the Diva Path to push Tobirama away, and with a roar, he grips Hashirama by the face and begins to use the Prada Path to siphon energy. However, Hashirama has infinite stamina, and so this doesn't help much. 
In fact, it becomes a danger to Naruto when Hashirama begins to utilize Sage Mode. Sakura can see him beginning to take on frog-like traits, and she tackles him out of the way. The Ghetto Statue would basically spike Hashirama and Tobirama, obliterating a good portion of their bodies, forcing them to regenerate. Sakura would try to wake Naruto up, begging him to stop. Sasuke would hit him with a Genjutsu to put him out at least, which would be diffused by his Rinnegan. Sakura would manage to calm Naruto down. Then, with his Rinnegan finally deactivated, Sasuke hits him with a Genjutsu to put him under. Together, they flee to the center building. When they get there, they would get the attention of whatever Jonin they could, telling them about the events of what had just happened. Kakashi would arrive, and they would explain what happened. With them being attacked by Shiore, Naruto getting bitten, and the resurrected bodies of Hashirama and Tobirama Senju. Kakashi would be startled to hear about it, and he would go to inform the Hokage. Sadly, due to this turn of events, Team 7 must forfeit the exams due to failing to get the scroll. Kakashi would add to Naruto a seal to restrict the spreading of the curse mark. Naruto would then be sent to the Hyuga Clan compound, where he would wait and make sure that he's okay. After some rest and the tuning exam's preliminaries were over, Naruto would witness Hinata coming home after a devastating fight with Neji in which she was beat horribly. Naruto would take it upon himself to watch over her. This, of course, would make her blush, but so long as he was near, she forgot about the pain and remembered only her terror. So it worked out well. She was slowly growing more comfortable with him. Naruto would continue to watch over her, telling her that he would be just outside training if she needed him. As he did so, Hiyashi Hugo would step out to see him. He would thank Naruto for watching over Hinata. He would then offer to fight with him. Naruto at first would seem a little nervous about that, but Hiyashi would tell him that it's okay. Hiyashi would ask him to activate his Byakugan. He would tell Naruto that, while the Byakugan could not cast Genjutsu or utilize as many powers as the Rinnegan, that out of the three Dojutsu, the Byakugan was the one with the best perception by far. He would tell him that he could use it to see Tenketsu, telling him that if he struck out at them correctly, he could immobilize the body, stating that if he ever hoped to surpass Neji, he would need to learn this technique. And so, Naruto and Hiyashi would continue to train in the gentle fist technique. For Naruto, the hard thing was making his body do what he was seeing and thinking. His accuracy was somewhat… trash. Hiyashi told him that it merely requires practice. He should practice using his Byakugan and striking targets with his fingers. Eventually, the longer he trained in this, the chakra control and accuracy would grow by leaps and bounds. He began becoming faster with his strikes. He was making progress quickly, and eventually, once Hinata was better, Hiyashi would recommend that she go train with him and show him the ropes. She would, and would even go so far as to teach him how to utilize the 8 trigram 64 palms. Naruto would grow quickly with the abilities of the Rinnegan, Sharingan, and Byakugan. If there's one thing that all these eyes share, it's having good vision. With the Byakugan's ability to see detail, the natural abilities that come with having a Rinnegan, and the copying abilities of the Sharingan, Naruto's rate of growth is almost terrifying. It's enough to get even Neji's attention. When the final rounds of the Chunin exams finally begin, Naruto and Hinata decide to watch. Neji's battle goes off without a hitch. However, when Gara's battle comes about, he releases Shukaku right then and there. The One Tail comes out, and Naruto would have to face off against him. Summoning his Susano, he would attempt to contain the battle and save as many people as possible, but Gara's attack on the stadium devastates it, killing many people. During the confusion and panic, Shinobi of Kumogakure make off with Hinata. Naruto manages to push Shukaku out of the stadium. Feeling like he'll need some help, he summons the Ghetto Statue in aid of the fight. During the fight, he manages to strip Gara of his tailed beast due to the power of the Ghetto Statue. This results in the death of Gara. Due to proper planning though, they set a trap for Orochimaru and kill him, and the third Hokage manages to survive. The attack is repelled. The third is also completely enthralled by the appearance of the demonic statue of the Outer Path. After this though, the issue of Hinata comes up. Hiyashi can't find her, she's not among the stadium survivors, and his Byakugan can't detect her under the rubble either. Little do they know that Neji was off trying to save her, his heart being turned towards them after the confession of what happened to his father. However, he fails to defeat the kidnappers and comes back wounded. Naruto would join a rescue team. They would pay attention to where Neji told them to go and would head in that direction until they found the remains of a camp. Befuddled, the team begins to search for clues, but it's Naruto's Byakugan that manages to scout out the trail. They manage to locate them, recognizing that Hinata is slowly pulling out strands of her own hair and leaving them in a trail behind her that could only be seen by a Byakugan in this thick forest. Once they locate her, they set up a trap for the ninja. With one swift stroke, they manage to defeat the shinobi, and Naruto rescues Hinata. This leaves her heart aflutter as her crush has become her hero. Together, they return home to the Hyuga compound. From there, they continue to live peacefully, with the third Hokage studying the powers of Naruto. One night, though, as they all slept, they were assaulted by the Sound 4. Naruto was pulled from his bed, and they attempted to take him, but as they attempted to leave with him, they were caught by Neji and Hiyashi, causing them to drop him. Hinata would free him. 
Hiyashi would demand to know what they're doing in the compound and they would state that they've come to take Naruto. When asked why, they would say that he possesses a curse mark and that with it, they can resurrect Orochimaru. All it requires is his curse mark, some of Orochimaru's DNA, perhaps some of Hashirama Senju's cells, and the evil releasing jutsu. And due to how desperately Orochimaru craved Naruto's body for his own, it only seemed right that they should use him. To that end, the Sound 4 as well as Kimimaru have appeared to take Naruto back to the Hidden Sound. Neji faces off against them, but he seems to be no match. Hiyashi also faces them, but his power is not as great as all four of Orochimaru's greatest warriors at once. Naruto seems to be holding his own well, especially considering that he is making ample use of his Susanoo to fight back. He manages to make space, but they're all still coming at him, and their strikes are powerful. It's then that Neji seems to take a fatal wound and Naruto loses himself. Within, the fox rages against the chains of its gate, dragging itself through it. At the same time, Naruto is now conscious of it. His eyes give command and Kurama heeds. Naruto suddenly takes the avatar of Kurama, made of pure golden light. He coats it in his Susano and proceeds to stomp the Sound 4. None can stand up against him. Each one is defeated, killed. Naruto comes out of it and rushes to Neji and begs him to stay with him. Neji's wounds are grievous and he has bled so much. He laments his fate, but he believes it maybe was worth it, dying the same as his father had, in defense of another person. Naruto asks him to stay with him and Hinata cries, telling him she doesn't want him to die. Hiyashi is there as well, he himself even crying over his nephew. Neji, surrounded by his family, smiles and takes his last breath, but it isn't long thereafter that another threat comes to town. A man wielding the same eyes as Naruto appears and begins to search for him. Pain was attacking the village. Now you may ask why Pain has come to the village so early. The answer is because Naruto has taken the ghetto statue. You see, Pain needs this statue. It's the husk of the ten tails and the container for each tailed beast they plan to steal. But Naruto with his own Rinnegan has taken it from him. He has not only made himself a prime target, but he's also shown himself to be a true threat, in so much that he can literally hijack their plan the moment he decides to. This means he has to die. As an added bonus, Pain will take the Nine Tails from him and kill him. The village all fight together, but in the end, Pain and his six paths are too strong and they manage to wipe out almost everyone. Naruto is no match for him, and so in the fray, Jiraiya takes Naruto and runs, as far as he can, as fast as he can. Naruto demands to know what he's doing and Jiraiya exclaims that he's saving the world. So long as Pain does not have the Nine Tails, he can't accomplish his plan. The issue was in escaping Pain, as he's an expert sensory type, but they eventually manage to do so. Naruto doesn't even know who Jiraiya is, but Jiraiya sure knows who Naruto is. He tells Naruto that he is the one foretold to come, the child of prophecy. Naruto demands that he take him back to Pain, but Jiraiya tells him that there is no chance that he could beat them. Naruto asks what he can do then. Jiraiya says they will train and fight until they're strong enough to defeat them, but to do that, they need to run. And so run they do. As time passes, Jiraiya begins to teach him. The Rasengan, Toad Summoning, and various other techniques. Naruto is taught how to use Sage Mode and how to tame the Ninetales. He tends to use his influence over it with the Rinnegan to deal with it. He learns about each path and how it works. He learns the summoning prowess of the animal path, the chakra draining nature of the Preta path, the soul manipulation of both the human and Naraka path, the body manipulation of the Ashura path, and the gravity control of the Diva path. But most importantly, he learns of the importance of the seventh path, the outer path, the control over life and death the ability he used to control the Ghetto Statue. For three years, Naruto trains for his confrontation with Pain, but he's not the only one training. The Akatsuki have set up shop in Konoha and have been scouring the globe, collecting tailed beasts, not yet putting them into the Ghetto Statue. Instead, they have them suspended above the village in a massive Chibaku Tensei. With Jiraiya's help, Naruto enters the village. He's come for his battle with Pain. To that end, he begins to face these six paths individually. He starts with the Ashura path. He counters the barrage of weapons from this path with his Susano and manages to destroy it with the same. The human and Naraka path gang up on him, but Naruto utilizes his summoning jutsu to even the odds with Gamabunta. However, the animal path joins the fray and summons the crab. I uh, know he has a lot of other cool and powerful summons, but I chose the crab because I like it better. The crab is cool. The crab and probably some of the other less adorable summons would hold back Gamabunta while Naruto fights Preta. The Preta path would attempt to suck out his chakra, but instead is turned to stone when Naruto utilizes his sage chakra. Naruto would face off against Diva, who would be standing atop the ghetto statue. Naruto would summon the Nine Tails and prepare to fight, coating it in majestic armor. Nagato laughs at the faulty strategy of Naruto, but Naruto stands resolute. Nagato states that Naruto has walked to his own death. 
The Devil would fire off chakra chains at Naruto, hoping to strip him of the Nine Tails. However, with a glare of his Rinnegan, the chains are pushed back. Diva sighs. With the power of his own Rinnegan, he commands the Ghetto Statue to attack the Nine Tails. Naruto and the Nine Tails coated in Susano armor. The two massive titans fight within the decimated village. The shockwaves from their strikes threaten to shatter the mountains. Pain would attempt to power up by drawing chakra from the other seven beasts, going so far as to absorb the other tailed beasts before throwing the Chewbacca Tensei at Naruto, who only manages to destroy it with a tailed beast ball. However, when he's not paying attention, a recovered Preta sneaks up on him and manages to take some of the Nine Tails' energy. He then delivers it to the Ghetto Statue, awakening it as the Ten Tails. Nagato, who had been in hiding, would then approach and attempt to absorb the Ten Tails, becoming its Jinchuriki. Naruto would start to become outmatched by this. The Six Paths, as well as the rejuvenated Nagato with the power of the Six Paths, would be too much. But as it seems that Naruto is about to perish, he's visited by the Sage of Six Paths, who once more grants him some of his chakra, this time a full portion, which awakens Naruto's Six Path Sage Mode. With this new power, Naruto becomes a more even match for Nagato, and manages to strip him of his ten tails. He would seal it away in a Six Paths Chibaku Tensei, and then spread the remaining tailed beasts away. As peace returns, Naruto looks down on what he has lost and wonder who remains. He had saved the world, but lost everything dear to him. He loved his village and he loved his people. Even if they didn't care as much for him, Naruto would look down and touch the ground where he had played as a child, where he met Hinata for the first time. Naruto looked up and sighed. If there was one thing he could do, he could do this. He would close his eyes and use the Samsara of Heavenly Life technique to revive all those who had died in Konoha since Pain attacked. This would bring them back to life, including Hinata. She would see him and rush over to grab him, but Naruto would fall on his back. She would hold him as his hair turned ghostly white and his skin turned pale. Naruto would look up at her as she cried for him. He told her the truth in that moment from the time that he rescued her from Kumogankade, he had loved her, but had never had the guts to say, and by the time he had processed these feelings, she was gone. She said that she loved him too and would have died for him. Naruto would give off a little laugh mixed with a cough and say that it seemed that they shared the same sentiments. He would look up at her and tell her that she needed to destroy Nagato's Rinnegan. This must under no circumstances ever be used again. For the sake of the world, the Rinnegan must never appear again. She promised to destroy it. Naruto laid there, his head in her arms, and they shared a single kiss before Naruto's life faded away. She cried for him, loudly. The entire village would gather around and look down upon the one that they had hated and reviled, realizing that he had saved their lives. They were never good enough. They didn't deserve Naruto or his kindness, and yet he had given it to them anyway. Hiruzen would order the village to be rebuilt. He would further have Naruto's name added to the statue of fallen heroes and would have his face carved into the Hokage monument right beside Minato. It was then that Naruto was posthumously declared the fifth Hokage, the shadow that kept the will of fire going while the village had burnt out. He stated that Naruto displayed all of the attributes of a Hokage, and to not name him such after what he had done would be a grand injustice. From here, Black Zetsu and Obito Uchiha would continue to try and manipulate events in their favor, including Sasuke's awakening of the Rinnegan. But what they didn't expect was that Sasuke would have taken a page out of Naruto's book and have his Rinnegan sealed to keep it from being stolen or ever used by anyone else. Obito's perfect world would go unfulfilled and Zetsu would go inert for likely another thousand years, until he could find the next incarnations of Indra and Ashura and manipulate one of them into awakening the Rinnegan. Time would pass on and Sasuke would become the next protector of the village, taking on the role of 7th Hokage after Kakashi, who replaced Hiruzen after the latter's death by old age. Teneri Otsutsuki would attempt to destroy the world, but since there were already two moons, they just let the Raikage blow it up. When Momoshiki came, he would be caught fighting against the five Kage, but instead of being destroyed by a father-son Rasengan, he's killed by a father-daughter Chidori, as it's Sarada who's implanted with the Karma Seal. When Ishiki shows up, however, there isn't much Sasuke can do, even with the Rinnegan. Ishiki demands the body of Kawaki to reincarnate into, but Sasuke refuses, and in a moment of desperation, kills Kawaki to ensure that he can never be used to reincarnate. Having lost his hope, Ishiki would kill Sasuke and destroy Konoha before turning to dust. Or at least, this is one line of events that I could see happening. Naruto possessing any dojutsu always turns out to be a real game changer, specifically because it gives him connection to other clans and newer abilities. I can never get enough of the AUs where he has the Rinnegan because it always leads him to a destiny where he must either become a god of creation or a god of destruction. Not just because of how the series dictates it, but because logically Naruto would use these powers in such a way that he would become one of the two. Anyway, let us know in the comments below your thoughts and ideas about the video. We would love to hear them. Did you enjoy our video? Well, then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi. 
and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.